of the day architect jay singh again his topic is uh, eighth semester design which is the thesis it has been a rather exhaustive day condensing many schools colleges from maybe nine o'clock to six o'clock covering all the subjects of all the ten semesters plus some masters I'm very confused. I do not know why I'm here. But the point Bharat asked me to cross-check and the Board of Studies asked me to cross-check is clarification on certain issues. I will touch up on few points that have been covered exhaustively and very deeply and in many factors very broadly today. I'm not concluding, but surprisingly the subject of me, eighth semester, and then a point thesis, to me is a very fascinatingly absurd subject. In the first six semesters of the school teach the student or attempt to teach the student if he wants to learn the basic tools of architecture or the basic tools of space and time. Because I believe architecture is not form and function, it's more time and space. Then the next semester, he's taken to a little higher level like because it's the arc is over or like the three years is over you're into literally the master's part the what we call the fourth and fifth year or the seventh to the tenth semester here i strongly believe and many practicing architects who have been involved in teaching for the past decades a couple of decades like me for over 40 years that the person, because this is a very fascinating profession, it's not like medicine, it's not like law, it's not like chartered accountancy or any of the other registered professions. It's a profession that at one leg you touch reality and in the other leg you touch abstraction. And yet you have to feel the ground and feel the sky. At this point he has to go out. Now the question comes is when does he go out? to the profession to intern. And when does he come back to do the thesis? This has been the big dialogue that's been going on happily. Fortunately for people like me, our courses were five and a half years. Now it came to five years. But many management finds it very convenient to shut out the last year and make the whole thing four years and say get out and make money without actually earning the money. In fact, I proposed to the Practicing Architects Association the other day that the colleges give that fees to the architect who interns the student. The other aspect that comes is once the student goes out, then he comes back to question the college from the reality point and the practical point with a sense of abstraction. He also understands what has he been taught or what has he not been taught. Here, I have a few points to go on this. I had the privilege of leading his early first batch of thesis students, which was exactly like what you talked about, which worked very well. And there are other classes which I have been going through, NIASA and the International Thesis and the Golden Award Thesis projects in Delhi. Here, the aspect that came was, what is the connection? Now, here comes the internship part. Do we break it here or do we break it there? Some people suggested that we give them the seventh and eighth as internship and then bring them back in ninth and tenth. That's not very good either. Then seventh becomes an advanced design stage. Can eighth and ninth become an internship? Can it become tenth of the thesis he comes back because I strongly believe the person must come back to the college to revert and face back the college and said are you real or is the world real you tell me because I here very strongly believe in one of the hardcore 
directives of how a thesis is to be written, because I look finally at the thesis as an answer, very much like it's a reflective process. The student turns back when he does a thesis to the college and says, this is what you taught me. And this is what I've learned. Whether the teaching was right or the learning was right is a question of debate. That is when the process starts. Here, he has to fundamentally prove that he can take anything and everything or whatever he understands, crosses the minimal standards. That passes him. Whether it is in presentation or whether it's in marks or drawings or whatever it is. Then he goes to the next level, his ability to express beyond the presentation. Which means, have I dwelled deeper into it? Have I dwelled beyond function and form? Have I dwelled beyond drawings? Have I then got into higher ideas? I always believe that if there are 100 students writing a thesis, the top 10 or top 5 are something exemplary. They don't even have to come to college, but they need the funders to get that. They will do it on their own, their ability to create it and present it. And there is another 15, 20 at the bottom. You do what you want, you just can't shift them. But do you keep them? Is it worth it? There comes the college. Can they make them useful enough to be part of the profession? Not just as great designers, but as part of the whole stream. The river requires all sorts of blends. Then the majority has a big abstraction within which it can go from this end to that end, which can skim. Because this profession of architecture is a learned profession. It is not pure art. It is not pure technology. It is a blend. Here, I must also confess, lately, I have not seen any exciting thesis at all, all over the country and abroad. Something has happened. People are afraid. Because I asked the professors questioning. This is the basic question. They are, th they are afraid of the practice. When I ask the student alone, sir, I'm afraid of my professor. If I do not follow him, he will fail me. If I do not do what he wants me to draw, he will make sure that I, pass. I can't go home. My parents want to pass me. There's another big crux that happens here. How many of these students actually want to do architecture or having joined architecture want to really be an architect? That's a big question. Not all of them. They want to be in the profession. That's the most important. But how many want to be an architect? That's a very crazy proposition to put. How many really want to practice architecture? How many really want to be creative out of that? How many want to be really a person of just what I would call a financial or what you call as a successful in the business sense? Then the question again comes every time we meet in certain forums to discuss, why is architecture limited to design of buildings only? Why can't it be taken to different realms of expression, journalism, art, business, various things, where an architect, because it's one profession that very complexly pushes a person to such learning process that he can become more than an architect. I was talking to some software engineers and software chairman people the other day. They very clearly say, very, very clearly, that some of the architectural students are the best software people that they ever, ever hired. They said, we would want you to send them as many as you can send, because they comprehend faster than an engineering student or a medical student or anything, and able to abstract, and then bring the abstract to detail, which was a fa fascinating compliment from some of the biggest IT people in the country. Then I was talking to the tourism people. They were talking about the same thing. Your students make some of the finest tourist guides and tourist writers. Same thing with journalism. In fact, our discussion now in the council and think, why are we not having architects in journalism? Very, very few. Hardly one or two write. Why? So the point is, there's a huge scope for it. But somebody did say to me the other day that the council holds back. I don't think the council holds back anything at all. If anything holds back, it is the university. I feel the AICT, you should push them away. Totally. Next, you must push the university away. Totally. Council simply says one thing. If you want to practice as an architect, you register with us. 
If you don't want to practice as an architect, we do not insist you practice with us. That's very obvious. How many architects want to practice on their own? And somebody was jokingly saying, even if they want to practice, they will hire an architect and practice. So the business factor is very simple. The, what I want is, can these schools of architecture, there are what, no 400 schools of architecture? Or about 400 plus, right? Huh? <laughs> 350, 450. No, 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 350 crossed on my line. <laughs> 350, 360. Take even 60 students on an average. But I know some schools have 200 students per class. Some schools have 35 students. Some schools have 40 students. You have an average of 20,000 students who are going to be passing out after three years, after four years. But then when I talked to the medical council about this and the law council, they had a laugh that said, hardly that's all? You mean you are the biggest building industry in the world? India is going to be, I'm glad everybody talked about housing because the next talk tomorrow or day after I have is about housing the trillions of Indians. I don't know why they called it trillions. I said tomorrow morning and day after tomorrow. How do you house them? Housing, yes, but housing, I must point to you because I, normally I'm not a structured, orderly person like all you people are. I'm a very chaotically orderly person. I believe you can't teach housing below six semester. You can't even teach them at 10th semester. You must teach them beyond that. You can teach one house with great difficulty. It is designed as a different process. You just teach them in the first six semesters the tools of design, the tools of drawing, the tools of whatever, comprehending the architectural issues. Then in the eighth, seventh, push them a little higher. Then send them out for internship, question them where they interned, where they interned. And then my last suggestion on this point is try to mix the profession and the teaching profession and the practicing profession as well as you can if you really want to make a remarkable mark in making this profession of architecture into a very, very, what you call positive value added thing in this scenario of the Indian architectural theme. Because very soon I'm very confident that many, many American, Australian, New Zealand, Russian, Chinese architects are going to get permission to practice in this country. Because they're working at various themes to get around the system to come. But then the challenges are more. I, I'm not a person who says I'm going to stop them. I will say, no, they're welcome. They're welcome into competitive world, provided you also welcome us in your competitive world. That's the only question I would say that would come to me. I would also put another point. I want to take fear out of students. How to take fear out of students and give them confidence that they can do it. Make the least of them come up to a short average, and the average to a little higher, and the brilliant to follow and set examples. I also very much agree with your methodology approach that there should be a collaboration of understanding between various disciplines of them, because the understanding today of complexity of architecture is not just art. It's not just drawing something very nicely. The disciplines that it confronts, apart from structure, is another 20, 30 disciplines. How many people understand acoustics? How many people understand air conditioning? They're all taking us for a ride because we don't know. You open the door, you'll fall down. I mean, these are reality scenarios. Sabri Malay, at least you pray God, who here what you will pray. Huh? Dogs only will come. I mean, you should be, are we, are we blunt enough to criticize our chairmen, our founders, our people like he said, are we blunt enough to criticize our clients? Are our students blunt enough to criticize the professors of design and architecture? No. They're scared shit of you people. Let me tell you. They come into my office shivering. I have two youngsters, now they beat them up also nowadays. And I said, no, come up with me, have a beer with me, have a drink with me. Then some confidence comes. I'm sure you youngsters can leave that way.
No, council doesn't lead you or AICT. I met the AICT vice chancellor. He's another human being like me. He comes quietly, he says, sir, can I have a whiskey or beer with me? In front of you, he wouldn't have. I said, come, now you talk. The vice chancellor talks. Poor fellow is as frustrated and as scared of his position with the chairman. The chairman is afraid how he is going to earn the money to run the school. Architecture has become a big business. Why is it every day there is an application for a new school? And you know, I'm going to get you something else. There's a new theory being put forward to me by very strong businessmen. Jaisim, why do we need schools of architecture? I don't want council recognition. I don't want AICT recognition. I don't want university. Can I have schools of design? Who is going to stop me? I said, nobody is going to stop you. Isn't it? Let us face the reality. Unless you keep, I don't know how many more years, number of students are going architecture. Because as it is this year, the number of things into electronics and other IT subjects have fallen down. They're closing down the shutters. When will this happen here? That is a very strange and a very dangerous thing. Finally, we are reaching some sort of a thing. Some schools shout at me, as if I have any power. I have nothing to do with council, I have nothing to do with AIC, I have nothing to do with anybody. But still I get phone calls saying, how will you get faculty for the so many students? I said, next question, you will have faculty and say, where are the students? It's a chicken and egg. You've got to get the numbers, you've got to get the teachers somewhere. We even thought of one thing, I will share it with you with a small short council of the official thing, all practicing architects will be compulsorily asked to take classes. <laughs> Whether they are competent or not. <laughs> because otherwise that... Another question, I'm just asking you, you are asking them to go to internship. If 20,000 students go for internship, how many practicing, registered with council architects are there today? Yes, but how many of them? You spread this, fellow, sir. Where? You got to look at the scenario in a much, much. That's 65,000 in the but you really take hardcore practicing number. Huh? I just came back from Calcutta. You're all your IT Karagpur architects. I had a long chat last night with them. That's why I'm still sleepy. They wouldn't go. All the professors, Arunta Krishna, your friends, who didn't drink a single drop till the rest went. After they drank all the bottle afterwards. I'm being blunt. I mean, poor architects want spare time in their heads to think and process. I believe we have a tremendous future. You can modify each of your schools with an ideology and a philosophy, which is different from each other's school. If you all follow this, you'll be worse than mechanical engineers and civil engineers. You will all end up with the same structure. We are not structural engineers. Although I don't think how many of you architects have registered for the Architecture Structure Convention in Delhi? Hardly 10 Indian architects. Whereas the 300 external architects have registered for that. Which is surprising. They are not coming for the conference. They want to come here and see what business is here. That's the way they are looking at it. Because I was seeing the register of things. Now, how do we get on this? It's your question, and I'm done with this for the day. I hope something solid and fruitful comes out of this. To me, it has been a thanks, Bharat, for an exhaustive invitation to Sting. And thanks, Rama, for a grateful hospitality for this thing. Thanks, Rajan, for the Board of Studies. Make them study. Not bored of studies. No, they shouldn't be bored of studies. Okay.